सो या हेलो एवरी वन वंस अगेन सॉरी फॉर अ डिले टूडे बट ओके आई स्टार्ट विद इट सो वी आर बट एज वी जनरली डू वी बी डूइंग ट्वेंटी फाइव एम सी क्यूज सो फॉर अस आई एम ऑडिबल मोस्टली आई एम आई थिंक सो सो या लेट्स बिगिंग विद द एम सी क्यूज सो द फर्स्ट इज द ब्रोकाज एरिया इज कंसर्न विथ एंड द ऑप्शन आर वर्ड फॉर्मेशन कॉम्प्रीहेंशन रिपीटेशन एंड रीडिंग so it's a uh, anatomy question so the question again i will repeat it is broca's areas is concerned with word formation comprehension repetition or reading so anyone wants to tell the answer broca's area is concerned with word formation comprehension repetition and reading this actually you have to remember so okay i will tell the answer the broca's area is concerned in the word formation and broca's area as you all know it will be in the inferior frontal lobe so next question we have d it is yeah in fin okay it is next question we have during the post op rounds you note one of the patient has developed fever and flying pain the nurses inform you that her abdominal drain outputs have been consistently high so which of the following procedure has the highest incidence of complication suspected here and uh, options are vaginal hysterectomy vertim hysterectomy abdominal hysterectomy or emergency cesarean section so basically what you see a patient is there having fever and flying pain and the abdominal drain outputs has been consistently high So which of the following procedure has the higher incidence of this complication suspected here? Vaginal hysterectomy, vertim hysterectomy, abdominal hysterectomy, or emergency cesarean section? So anyone wants to tell this answer? Which of the following procedure has the highest incidence of this flying pain and fever? And the output is high. So the condition here is anyone? Okay, I will only tell. See the what? The answer is vertim cesarectomy. Second, yeah, second, uh, vertim cesarectomy only. See the complication is because of the uterine injury is there, and we don't see in vaginal cesarectomy also it will be there, but it is not that much. As compared to the vertim cesarectomy, so the answer here is vertim cesarectomy, and I will tell what they have mentioned here. See, the urinary tract injury occurs almost exclusively in major gynecological surgeries that involves surgical dissection proximity to the ureters or bladders. So, vaginal cesarectomy will be there, but it tends to be lower rates of urinary injuries than the open or laparoscopic route. So, the answer here is vertim cesarectomy. Next question we have. A child presents to you with bilateral proptosis. After evaluation, he is diagnosed with with doroma. So, which of the following is not a marker for this condition? The first is lysozyme CD forty three, CD forty five, and CD sixty one. This is also factual question, but okay, I'll again repeat. A child comes to you with bilateral proptosis. After evaluation, you diagnose it as with doroma. So, which of the following is not a marker for this condition? Lysozyme CD forty three, CD forty five, or CD sixty one. So anyone can guess at least. Which of the following is not a marker for this? Okay, I will read the answer. I think no one wants. Okay, the answer is CD sixty one. Because the other whatever they have done, like the same CD forty three, CD forty five, they are the markers of pleuroma, and as or uh, and they have also given CD one one seven and MPO also is a marker for pleuroma. So what is pleuroma first? Pleuroma is also called as myeloid sarcoma. It is a extra medullary tumor that occurs in two to fourteen percent of the patient with AML. So we have to remember this answer. Okay. Then we have which of the which is the most Common primary malignant tumor of lid, that is eyelid. 
first is squamous cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma malignant melanoma and macular carcinoma so anyone know the answer what which is the most common primary malignant tumor of lid eyelid squamous cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma malignant melanoma and macular macular cell carcinoma it's a obvious question anyone primary malignant tumor of the lid eyelid okay so the answer here is is anyone okay no one knows so the answer here is basal cell carcinoma and the second most cause is squamous cell carcinoma this is also you have to remember that no concept is there okay next we have an elderly lady a lady was diagnosed with osteoporosis and was advised to start treatment with bifosphonates Since the patient refused to come to hospital frequently, she was prescribed a drug that is given on yearly basis. So, which among the following is given to that lady? Risperidone, Zolidronate, Ibuprofen, or Alendronate? I'll repeat once again. A elderly lady comes to you. And she is having osteoporosis. So, which among the following is given to that lady? Risperidone, Zolidronate, Ibuprofen, or Alendronate? I'll repeat once again. A elderly lady comes to you. And she has been already diagnosed with osteoporosis. And she has been advised to start the treatment with bisphosphonates. So, basically, she is. Now it has refused to come to the hospital, so they have given a drug on yearly basis. So which among the following is given to this lady? Risperidone, Zolidronate, Ibuprofen, or Alendronate? Anyone wants to answer this? Okay, the answer here is anyone, anyone. Okay, the answer here is Zolidronate, Zolidronate. So zolidronate is a bisphosphonate that is administered. D D is not the answer. No. See zolidronate it it is administered yearly. Yeah, it is administered yearly. So that's why that is the answer. And um, what you said is D D is alendronate. Alendronate can be administered daily or weekly with different doses. So with yearly only we have only one that is the alendronate. And ibuprofen it is administered daily, weekly or quarterly. So the answer is sure that it is zolidronate. Next we have you are performing capillary blood glucose charting for a newborns in the postnatal ward. So below what level we will consider it as a hypoglycemia? Less than forty five, less than forty, less than fifty, less than fifty five. So it is a capillary blood glucose charting for newborns. So below what le- level you can treat it as hypoglycemia? Less than forty-five, less than forty, less than fifteen, less than fifty-five. Really, when do you consider it as hypoglycemia in newborn? Simple question. So, anyone less than forty-five, less than forty, less than fifteen, less than fifty-five? Yeah. No, 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 no. Not forty-five. That forty-five is actually plasma glucose, but they have given it as capillary blood glucose. Capillary blood glucose it is less than 40. See, neonatal hypoglycemia is defined as blood glucose level less than 40 mg per dl or plasma glucose less than 45 mg per dl. So, if it is a capillary, you have to tell 40, and if it is plasma, you have to tell 45. Okay, next we have what is the first line agent for treating a patient with generalized tonic-clonic seizure? The options are phenytoin. Carbamazepine, levetiracetam, and valproate. So, what is the first line agent for treating a patient with generalized tonic-clonic seizures? In phenytoin, carbamazepine, levetiracetam, or valproate. This at least someone should tell. Phenytoin, carbamazepine, or levetiracetam, or valproate. First line management for UTCs. Anyone wants to tell? We'll try at least. I will tell the answer. The answer here is anyone. Okay, it is valproate. First line drug for GTCS is valproate. So I will tell all the first line drugs. See for GTCS already valproate I told, and it is also lamotrigine also there. For focal seizures, lamotrigine and carbamazepine is there. So typical valproate. Yeah, yeah, valproate is the right answer. So for typical absence seizure, it is valproic acid and lamotrigine. Lamo Taken is there in everyone, every every seizures or atypical absence. Myotonic, atonic. There also we have valproic and 
cloud dragon next question so what is the extrinsic incubation period of the dengue virus 1 to 2 days 4 to 6 days 8 to 10 days or 12 to 14 days what is the extrinsic incubation period of a dengue virus not intrinsic it is extrinsic incubation period 1 to 2 4 to 6 8 to 10 or 12 to 14 and this refers to the period necessary for development of the disease agent in the arthropod host so it is i want to try 1 to 2 days 4 to 6 8 to 10 and 12 to 14 days Okay. 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 The answer here is eight to ten days. Two days, no. It is eight to ten days. It is in the arthropod, not in the humans. So in yeah. Next we have which of this comes out to be the positive in the cervical lymph node biopsy from a patient with lymphotic. Lymphocytic predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. That is LPHL. So the options are BCL6, BCL2, BCL3, BCL1. So which of these will be positive in the cervical lymph node biopsy in a patient with lymphocytic predominant Hodgkin lymphoma? Yeah, to ten is the right. So here the options are BCL6, BCL2, BCL3, and BCL1. This also you have to remember. This question is a factual matter. Okay, the answer here is BCL BCL sets. It in NL nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. It will be BCL sets positive and CD20 positive sets. Yeah, BCL sets is the right answer. So BCL sets positive and CD20 positive. It will be there in. And in this nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma, and CD15 and CD30 will be negative. That also you have to remember. So you have to remember all CD30, CD15 will be negative, BCL6 and CD20 will be positive. So next we have, then we have a peripheral smear. Uh, it is given in the picture. A peripheral smear is there of a patient who presents with a generalized lymphadenal pathy. And hepatosplenia megaly is given below. So I cannot show you, but I can tell what it is there. See the peripheral smear has a basically it shows what it shows here. Tumor cell is there, and in there it is multi-lobulated nuclei is there. It can can diagnose it. You can tell by it is a global leaf of flower cells. Because if it is present, it is a peripheral smear has been present uh, of the patient to present it with. There are two things: the generalized lymphadenal pathy is there, as well as hepatosplenia megaly is there. So, what is the likely diagnosis by seeing the pathological picture? That is, flower cells or clover, clover leaf cells, multi-lobulated nuclei will be present. So, the options are mantle cell lymphoma, peripheral T cell lymphoma, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, and adult T cell leukemia or lymphoma. So, anyone wants to answer this? Basically, on the Peripheral smear only you can diagnose it. Global leaf of flower cells, we know where it is. It is a diagnosis of which condition. Okay, the answer here is adult T cell leukemia or lymphoma. See, this condition occurs in adults infected by human T cell leukemia retrovirus type B, type one, that is HTLV one. It is a rapidly progressive disease that is fatal within months to one year following diagnosis. So the characteristic features of this, that is the either T cell leukemia or lymphoma, are first is skin lesions, generalized lymphoma, pathy, hepatitis, pleural megaly, peripheral blood lymphocytosis, and hypercalcemia. Okay. So next question we have. See, uh, next question we have a patient with mania. That is the second question. A patient with mania has been initiated on lithium therapy. While counseling the patient about the medication, which of the following effects do you mention as the most common serious adverse effect? So basically, there is a patient with mania, and you are given. I will repeat once again. There is a patient with mania, and you are given lithium therapy. 
and which of the following is most common CNS adverse effect so the options here are ataxia, slurred speech, fine tremors and coarse tremors so I'll repeat once again ataxia, slurred speech, fine tremors and coarse tremors CNS adverse effects of lithium therapy no one wants to answer this okay the answer here is no one wants to answer okay the answer here is spine tremors the most common whatever we use lithium we are using here the most common CNS manifestation will be spine tremors that is a fine posture hand tremors will be there and others whatever we have given at the ataxia, slurred speech and coarse tremors they will be there but it will be there in high concentration of lithium not in normal concentration of lithium so that's why we give a single bedtime dosing to avoid the adverse effects next question we have a middle aged woman fine tremors yeah so next question a middle aged woman with an acute altered mental state was brought to the emergency room she had a history of hypothyroidism but not on regular medication on examination <coughs> On examination, her pulse rate was 40 beats per minute, BP was 80 by 60. Which of the following cannot be used in the treatment of this patient? Atropine, dopamine, transglutaminous spacing, and adenosine. I will repeat, middle aged woman comes to the emergency room with an altered mental state. And she has a history of hypothyroidism and with no regular medication. On examination, pulse is 40, BP is 80 by 60. Which of the following cannot be used? in this treatment of the patient that is atropine, dopamine, transglutaneous patient and adenosine see the atropine, dopamine and that I think it can be used here see, anyone wants to answer the way I will repeat the options atropine, dopamine, transglutaneous patient and adenosine I think most of you will know that because the answer adenosine won't be used because without knowing the ECG, without knowing the super well, super ventricular tachycardia and all that, we cannot put adenosine di di like that only. So dopamine, atropine and transporting patient can be given to that patient to increase the right, BP and heart rate, but not adenosine. Adenosine cannot be given. So yeah, they have written adenosine cannot be used and it is used to treat super ventricular tachycardia not bad here demand also so yeah so uh, it, it, the treatment can be 1 mg atopin IV which may be repeated in 3 to 5 minutes interval to a maximum of 3 mg okay next question an asthmatic patients come to you uh, with uh, complaints of wheezing and shortness of breath most of the days of the week which of the following therapies preferred in them inhaled SABA SABA inhaled LABA Inhaled LABA plus inhaled corticosteroids or inhaled SABA plus inhaled corticosteroids. So, an asthmatic patient's patient comes to you with uh, bleeding and softness of breath most of the days of the week, and which of the therapies preferred? Inhaled SABA, inhaled LABA, inhaled LABA plus inhaled corticosteroids, inhaled SABA plus inhaled corticosteroids. And I want to try at least. Okay, no, okay, I'll give the answer here. The answer here is inhaled LAB plus inhaled particles. Yeah, Dhruvenia. It is right. See the, see the right answer. So, if you have a persi persistent asthma, you have to give inhaled LAB plus inhaled particles. As a, it is available as a combination inhaler and it should be started in any patient who needs to be to use a short acting beta 2 agonist inhaler for symptomatic control more than twice a week. If it is persistent asthma, is there, you can have to give. Inhaled LAB and inhaled plus corticosteroids. So there is a full that is the chart is there. I have to remember that. Okay. Next question, yeah. Next question we have uh, crown drum length is 21 cm and the length of the lower limb is 10 cm and gestational age of the fetus will be. So basically it's a periodic question and you have to tell what is the gestational age of the fetus by just telling the crown length from crown rump length that is 21 cm and the length of the lower limb is 10 cm so the gestational age will be 
سکس ٹو سیون منتھس فور ٹو فائیو منتھس سیون ٹو ایٹ منتھس اور ایٹ ایٹ ٹرن بیبی سو یا اینی ون وانٹس ٹو آنسر دس دیر از بیسیکلی دیر از فارملا فار دس اوکے ٹین دا آنسر از یا اوکے نو ون وان نو ون نو از ایکٹلی سو دا آنسر یار از سکس ٹو سیون منتھس دا فارملا فار یو ہیو ٹو ریمبر دیٹ آل ادر تھنگس آر سی دا دیٹ از اے رول آف ہیس सिक्स टू सेवन या सिक्स टू सेवन मंथ्स इन द राइट आंसर सी यू माइट बी नोइंग दैट इज ए रूल ऑफ हेज दैट इज बेसिकली फॉर द एस्टिमेशन ऑफ द एज ऑफ द फिटर्स इन लोनार मंथ्स फ्रॉम क्राउंड टू हिल लेंथ सो सी द एज इन मंथ्स इज स्क्वेर रूट ऑफ द क्राउन हिल लेंथ एंड एज इन मंथ्स इट इज क्राउन हिल लेंथ डिवाइडेड बाई फाइव सो बेसिकली यर वॉट वी आर डूइंग इट इज क्राउन हिल लेंथ दैट इज क्राउन रम प्लस लोअर लिम लेंथ दैट इज थर्टी वन सेंटीमीटर सी फर्स्ट यू हैव टू नो वॉट इज So they have given crown drum length. They have given length of the lower limb is given. That is the crown hill length. That is it will be 21 plus 10. That is 31 centimeter. That will be crown hill length. So it, here it will be 6 to 7 months as per the rule of his. I think you have to read this again. It's because it is a square root of the crown hill. That is 31 31 square root. It will be around 6 to 7 months. The next question we have. A uh, 50-year-old male in there who is a chronic alcoholic presents to you with dyspnea and he, and he has a high output cardiac failure. Investigations which are done has been revealed that cardiomegaly is there and they reduce erythrocyte transcritolase activity is present. So which is the vitamin that is deficient? Vitamin deficiency they are asking. B1, vitamin B1, B2, B3 or pyridoxin. I will repeat this again. A uh, 50 year old male patient comes to you with, with a chronic alcoholic history as well and presents with dyspnea high output cardiac failure. So investigations it uh, reveals that it is a cardiomegaly and reduce erythrocyte transcriptolis activity though which vitamin deficiency is there. B1, B2, B3, pyridoxine. So next question is here. This uh, thing of chronic alcoholism with vitamin deficiency, you can get that. Uh, anyone wants to tell the answer? Chronic alcoholism is in which vitamin deficiency, which will lead to vitamin deficiency. And it can cause fatal, I didn't tell the disease it's itself. It's very, very. Now at least we can tell. It's a case of red very, very. Yeah, red very, very is the case. So the deficiency will be, which deficiency it will be vitamin? Now it will contain at least. You see, red very, very is associated with all the serious manifestations, whereas the dry, it is there, it will be peripheral and serious manifestations. So it is deficiency of vitamin B1, not B2, B3 and paradoxin. Time and deficiency basically it is. And then next question we have, uh, patient is, that is a Savitri, a three week old baby he is having bouts of non bilious projectile vomiting. On examination, the child seems to be lethargic and dehydrated. Then we do an abdominal examination, it shows visible gastric peristalsis. So, what is the investigation of choice for this diagnosis of this patient? Barium milk, ultrasound, CT scan, or MRI? Okay. First, you have to tell what is the condition. Otherwise, you won't know what is the investigation of choice. I will repeat the question. Three week baby is there, three week old baby with non bilious erectile vomiting and it is lethargic and dehydrated. Abdominal shows visible gastric peristalsis. Yeah, you're right. But tell me the diagnosis first. Because in a baby with visible peristalsis, you can easily make out a diagnosis. And then, yeah, USG is the right answer. But diagnosis, if anyone knows, Yeah, it is congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis because see non bilious will be non bilious and that is a peristalsis in the abdomen. You can see, so it is confirmed that it is a congenital hypertrophic. There is one more thing about shape, olive shape. Yeah, olive shape you can see in that. So yeah, so yeah, investigation choice is ultrasound, and in ultrasound will be nipple sign and cervix sign will be present. So next question we have a neonate is there. 
uh, brought to the pediatrician on day five of life with bilious vomiting. That was non-bilious. This time it is bilious vomiting with failure to pass meconium. On examination, the abdomen was distended, and X-ray shows distended bowel loops due to suggestive family history. The resident suspected Hirschsprung disease. So, what is the gold standard investigation of choice? USG, barium enema, rectal biopsy, or you know, rectal manometry. So basically, you have to tell what is the investigation of choice of the Hirschsprung disease. All that is okay. USG, barium enema, rectal biopsy, and rectal manometry. Gold standard, that is gold standard for diagnosis of Hirschsprung disease. Biopsy, yeah. This is the answer is rectal biopsy. So what all it shows in rectal biopsy? It is as per Hirschsprung disease, we know what it is. Ganglia will be not present. So the, it shows absent ganglia, hypertrophic nerve runs, then positive immunoscanning for acid alcoholic hysteresis, calibrating immunoscanning. And uh, anorectal manometry can be done, but it is not a uh, gold standard. It is a screening tool. And barium enema, but barium enema, what will you show? Because it is already obstruction is there. Bowel is distended, so it won't go only. So I don't think barium enema is any useful here. Rectal biopsy is a gold standard. Okay, then which of the following is the most common eating disorder? It is a psychiatry question. Uh, the options are binge eating, anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, or night eating syndrome. So, which is the most common eating disorder? Binge eating, anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, night eating disorder. One hint I will give it is more common in females. Sorry, binge eating is more common in females only, but yeah. Um, yeah, now, yeah, the answer is A. A N A N is anorexia nervosa. No, uh, sorry, not A. Anorexia nervosa. It is uh, binge eating. Binge eating disorder. That is most common eating disorder that is seen in females more than males. And during this, what happens? A patient feels that he cannot control her eating, and he's an abnormal large amount of food over a short time. Then this episode occurs in private and generally include food of dense calorie content. So the answer is binge eating disorder. Next we have it is a pathology. Yeah. A 19 year old patient woman comes to you with complaints of progressive shortness of breath, chest pain and lower extremity edema over the past month. So laboratory findings are given, a renal biopsy was done which shows the pathological picture is there also. Which of the following antibodies is considered to be the most specific for this disorder? We have to tell the what are the findings words. Hemoglobin is 9. You have to remember this question. So 19 year old patient comes to you with clinical symptoms are progressive that is shortness of breath, chest pain and lower extremity edema is there. Three points you have to remember. And over the last one month, renal biopsy was done and see the investigations are hemoglobin is 9. Platelet is 1,16,000. Triad is 2.68. ANA titers is greater than 1 is to 80. Urine protein is 3 plus. Urine hemoglobin is also 3 plus. So, and the pathological picture they have given, there is a, what should I tell for this pathological picture? See, there is a vial loop and the endocapillary proliferation is there of the biopsy, renal biopsy basically. See, you can tell from the investigation only, I think. ANA titer, ANA titer is seen in which condition? We oh, yeah, have given the options here. So, the question was which of the following antibodies is considered to be the most specific for this disorder? That is SS, ARO, anti SM, anti DS, DNA, and anti histones. We will tell you the basically what we are talking about is it is officially now at least you can. Correlate. It is a case of SLE where progressive shortness of breath, chest pain, lower estimate edema is there, and all that laboratory findings are told already. Hemoglobin 9 and all. So, what is the most specific antibody? SSARO, anti SM, anti DS, DNA, and anti histone. So, you can tell what is the most specific antibody for SLE. So the answer here is anti-SM. Anti-SM is the most specific, not sensitive, you cannot tell but it is the most specific. 
एंटीबॉडी फॉर एस एल ई एंड मोस्ट सेंसिटिव इज आई एन ए आई एन ए वी नो बट एंटी दिस हैव टू रिमेम्बर एंटी एस एम एंटीबॉडी इज द मोस्ट स्पेसिफिक फॉर एस एल ई मिक्स क्वेश्चन वी हैव देन बिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द अर्लीस्ट साइन ऑफ क्रॉन्स डिजीज ऑन बेरियम स्मॉल बॉगल फॉलो थ्रू स्टडी दैट इज ऑप्शन सर एफ्टर सल्सर रोजथॉन अपेरेंस स्ट्रिंग साइन ऑफ रैंटर ऑबेस्थॉन अपेरेंस सो वॉट इज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द अर्लीस्ट साइन ऑफ क्रॉन्स डिजीज ऑन बेरियम स्मॉल बॉगल फॉलो थ्रू स्टडी चल रिपीट द ऑप्शन सेवन सेवन एफ्टर सल्सर रोजथॉन अपेरेंस स्ट्रिंग साइन ऑफ कैंटर और कॉबेस्थॉन अपेरेंस So anyone wants to answer this? It's a case of Crohn's disease on barium small small bowel follow up. So IBD and C C screen sign of Anton now. See I am asking the earliest sign if anyone knows. The screen sign of Anton will be there, but it is not the earliest sign. And I will tell you, see screen sign of Anton is basically tubular narrowing due to spasm or stricture depending on the chronicity, but The earliest sign will be after sulcer. Yeah, after sulcer is the earliest sign, and other also also the rosestone appearance and all that will be there. But the earliest sign we have to remember is after sulcer. It's the uh, earliest radiological sign of Crohn's disease and barium small bowel follow up. Next question: A woman is there whose weight is 58 kg, has second degree burns, covering 10 percent of her total body surface area. So, which of the following formula would you use to calculate the amount of fluid to be given? Um, okay, the options are percentage of burns into weight into two equals to volume in ml. Percentage of burns into weight divided by two equals to volume in ml. Percentage of burns into weight into four equals to volume in ml. And last one is the weight plus 100 ml into BSM burn equals to volume in ml. So there was some yeah Partland formula that you might be knowing at least. So they are asking that formula only. What is the Partland formula? There are other formula also. There are I think Evans formula is there. Yeah. So Partland formula. Anyone wants to tell what is the which what is the Partland formula used in the burns patient for for calculating the amount of fluid to be given here. So. Okay, the answer here is three percentage of burns into weight into two equals to volume in ml. So what they are given is according to the latest ATLS that is advanced life advanced thermal life support. It is for second and third degree burns in the first twenty four hours the formula is this that is total percentage body surface area burned into weight into two that is equal to volume in ml. So this you have to remember. Partland formula was also yeah it is there a modified Partland formula that is the total percentage of body surface area into weight into four equal to volume but here it is the according to the latest ATLS so you have to remember it is percentage of burns into weight into two equal to volume in ml now ENT question an ENT surgeon has difficulty locating the mastoid antrum due to the presence of corner septum So, which of the following sutures is present in this case? Petrosomal suture, petrotympanic suture, tympanomastoid suture, or petromastoid suture? So, I'll repeat once again. It is the ENT surgeon who has a difficulty in locating the mastoid antrum due to the presence of corner septum is there. So, which of the following suture is present is persistent in this case? So, the following suture is persistent in this case. Petrosomal suture, petrotympanic suture. Tympano mastoid suture or petro mastoid suture. This is not a ENT, but yeah, okay. Okay, so it was an at least anyone can tell what is corner symptom, and that you can tell. So corner symptom is the answer basically. You can you can know the corner symptom, you can tell the answer easily. Okay, I will tell you the uh, corner symptom. Basically, it is the answer itself. That is, that is the persistence of petrous mammis suture. That is called as corner symptom, and it is responsible for difficulty in locating all mastoid antrum. All 
So what is the corner septum? It separates superficial squamous cell from deep petrosal cells. So you have to remember this. What is the corner septum? It is consistence of petrous squamous sutures. Incomplete removal of the disease and mastoidectomy can occur if it is not identified. Okay. Next question: Identify the papilla from the given historical section. This without. Okay, I'll just leave this question to us. The next question: Which of the following subtypes of HIV is most common in India? This thought I everyone will tell you. Which of the following subtype of HIV is common in India? A, B, C, D. This at least at least you can guess and tell. Most common subtypes in India: HIV, A, B, C, D. Yeah, yeah. Anyone, yeah, anyone can guess at least. It is which are the most following subtype of which is most common in India. A, B, C, D. Please guess. How can I tell the answer? The answer here is C. C is the most common in India and causes more than 95 percent. A and C are readily. That's the that's for explanation I'm telling. Subtypes A and C are more readily transmitted by heterosexual contact, whereas subtype B is most commonly by Homosexual contact and injection. Subtype B is not the answer. Subtype C is the most common subtype of HIV in India. Then the last question for today: A child has come to you for the administration of MMR vaccine as a part of a routine immunization schedule. So, which of the following antibodies may be found in this vaccine? Penicillin, streptomycin, amikacin, erythromycin. Okay. So then the question. I will repeat. MMR MMR vaccine is there. Are, so which of the following anti not antibodies sorry which of the following antibiotics may be found in this vaccine this MMR vaccine this penicillin streptomycin amikacin or erythromycin this I didn't know I will I will see it until now only okay, the answer here is, here is uh, streptomycin. The streptomycin and neomycin are antibiotics found in traces in vaccines like MMR and IPV. So antibiotics are used during vaccine manufacture to prevent bacterial contamination of tissue culture cells. Yeah, the streptomycin. I also came to know today that antibiotics are also there in vaccine. Yeah, the so streptomycin and neomycin are present in MMR and IPV. So that you have to remember. So yeah, for today, 25 questions are over. So thank you so much and okay, bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.